Hello, uh, my name is Brian Cardarella and I'll be presenting on Elixir Ecosystem Survey Results 2020 edition. So uh, hopefully um, uh, most people saw that uh, I was uh, collecting survey data um, a few months back and we kept this survey open for uh, up until mid August, early August. And um, we really want to uh, uh, kind of build upon this data over time, help inform decisions on how to uh, market message Elixir and also find some maybe pitfalls that uh, uh, Elixir core team or open source developers in, in the Elixir space are unaware of that you know, things that people need or want. So <clears throat> yay Elixir Conf 2020. I'm actually really enjoying the conference. Um, for those of you that did not go to the after party last night, it was a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully we'll see more people there today. And um, I am formerly of Dockyard, um, but I'm still the founder and chairman, um, but my day-to-day -day ended at the end of last year, um, but I still wanna uh, kind of, you know, promote the company and help them out. So um, Dockyard does custom software solutions and um, if you're looking to uh, hire a consultancy to uh, either augment your existing Elixir team, um, train up uh, a new team, or consult on how best to architect a uh, Elixir-based solution, you should absolutely hire Dockyard. So um, the goals of the survey, we uh, really want to use this year to establish a baseline. And uh, for those that have been around Elixir for a few years, you may remember Josh Adams' surveys. Uh, uh, and it, he was really helpful with trying to get some of that data um, to help inform this survey. Unfortunately, some of it was lost. Um, his uh, uh, prior um, company, Daily Drip, uh, we weren't able to retrieve the credentials necessary off of Typeform to pull that data out. Um, and so the, I think the, the most recent year was 2016, which to me felt too far apart from 2020 to really uh, do any type of comparative analysis on the data. Um, but for what is worth, Josh was uh, uh, really responsive and helpful to, to try to do something about that. Unfortunately, it's just the way things go sometimes. Um, <clears throat> there's gonna be a lot of uh, things that, um, we can improve upon coming out of the survey for sure. Um, either uh, paring down some of the questions, make it faster to get through the survey and such. Um, and we want to be able to do that um, uh, definitely next year. And I'd really like to have uh, hopefully some people in the community that are really passionate about community building, maybe get involved with the survey. Um, so it's just not me. Um, and, uh, from the survey uh, data itself, we now can have these uh, uh, these goals that we can set, metric goals that we can measure progress through year after year and say, you know, are we meeting this? Are we falling back on this? So let's get right into the results. Okay, um, the first thing to note is that uh, we had, let me bump this up a bit. Uh, we had over 3,100 responses, which is awesome. Our goal was to hit 3,000 and we exceeded that. However, someone pointed out to me, and this is like anecdotally funny, um, or maybe it should be the way things go. But uh, if you look at the Elixir Slack, we have almost 29,000 people in the Elixir Slack. so. We should be able to do much better than that. And I'll get into engagement and how I went about distributing the survey and what impact it probably had upon the survey results in a little bit. But we're just gonna systematically go through these. And all of this data will be publicly available. Um, if you're feeling like reading my screen and typing this in, this is uh, a link that's public that's up there. And I am gonna uh, take the, uh, the data itself and make that file available. Hugo from Platformer Tech is going through and trying to normalize some of the data and hopefully make it a bit sane. Typeform does not give you the best data dump. Um, a CSV file is uh, 
kind of unfortunately the way they have it organized. Um, so it's going to take some time um, to get it. I feel like usable, but um, if some people from the community want to be helping out with that, that's awesome. Anyway, get in touch. We're in the community dash survey channel on the Elixir Slack. So 86% uh, of respondents said that they um, are currently using Elixir in professional or personal projects. And thankfully we had a very small percentage of the uh, respondents that say that they won't be using it again, 20 respondents. Um, there was some logical branching in the survey. Unfortunately, the, the um, survey data visualization um, results on uh, type form don't allow me to selectively show. So I'll kind of um, talk like when I know a branch occurred. So this is the first one. If you said that you aren't using Elixir right now, um, either you stopped using it uh, for whatever reason, or you don't plan on coming back, you are sent down this branch. So the reason why uh, uh, Respondents said that they weren't using Elixir. And these numbers are small on the right-hand side because not many people, thankfully, went down this branch. Um, number one answer was, well, other than another, but um, uh, the company migrated to another language or framework. Very close second, ecosystem lacked necessary solutions for use cases. The way that the survey was set up, other was a free forum field. And we can see that there's only um, 83 responses on that. And we can go through it very quickly, but um, without some real normalization on it, I can tell you that it usually comes down to uh, actually something very similar to some of these answers up here. Um, either their company moved to something different or uh, they felt like they weren't progressing in the language. Um, but hopefully once we're able to normalize this data, we're gonna get some more uh, data points to, to pull out of this. Um, <clears throat> this was a, one of the few absolute free form answer uh, questions to answer in the, uh, in the, the survey. And um, a lot of these are uh, editor related. So there's IDE editor, there's CMS. There's one that says documentation. Um, and I'm actually the belief that Lecture has awesome documentation. So it could come down to that perhaps um, the, uh, the Elixir uh, uh, website is not properly uh, messaging where the documentation is. But then again, that's one particular response and you don't have to focus on that. Editor is an interesting one. Um, I feel like that, uh, especially through uh, the language server, Elixir has pretty good editor support, but compared to other languages that have strongly typed um, systems in there, there may be some uh, static analyses that can be done on those languages that aren't currently possible on Elixir and the, the power of those tools they may be missing out on. I don't know, I'm just speculating. Node being the number one answer where people uh, uh, tended to gravitate towards, um, if not Elixir. And then, but honestly, all these are pretty close. Go Java Ruby. I'm surprised that Rust was this far down. I would have expected to see it a little bit higher. And then most respondents have been using Elixir for um, what I consider to be like the senior level, three plus years, uh, and then one to two and um, uh, less than one is uh, lower. Uh, I will say that I was surprised about this. I was hoping to see that less than one to be a much larger number. To me, that would indicate that there is growth in that space and you know, the people that had been coming along um, especially because three plus years in Elixir isn't, we're not talking about like that encompasses like two decades of time that really encompasses say like the past five or six years. Um, one to two and then a less than one. Um, so hoping it would make up more than 50%. Uh, the, these type of answers though, the, the data could come down to that. Maybe I wasn't engaging properly with, with uh, people that are new to the language on requesting their responses in the survey. And it's also good to see that vast majority of people are on the, uh, the newer versions of Elixir. Um, so word of mouth tends to be the strongest uh, uh, kind of, I guess, way people are learning about Elixir. Uh, blog posts, thought leaders uh, come into play too. And then reading a book is the most impactful learning tool. And so Elixir has a, a good number of books in them. Uh, in the, in the uh, community, but this may actually hopefully lead others to consider writing a book. 
and putting those out there, even if some of the material has been retread over, just uh, you know, coming up with their own spin on it. Because this is showing that there is a significant market out there for people that um, want to be learning from books as opposed to other sources of media. So hopefully that, that uh, pushes some people to do so. The vast majority of people um, have not written any Erlang, but thankfully some people started to learn Erlang uh, after, the, after uh, learning Elixir, myself included. And this is one question I'll probably drop next year. I thought it might be interesting, but it, it was just so skewed, is if you're using another Beam-based uh, language and 92% know they have not. Age range is probably where I was expecting it to be. Um, and then gender identity and country. Uh, unsurprisingly, Elixir is very heavily skewed towards uh, men. Uh, people identify as male. And um, uh, unsurprisingly, you know, a lot of people um, responded to the survey over in the United States. So what I'll say here is that while I'm not surprised that um, uh, the, the gender identity numbers are um, overwhelmingly male, um, I am a bit shocked to see that it's this small uh, on the female side. And this could be, I don't want to explain it away and say like, oh, that's not the case. Elixir is not heavily you know, male skewed. Um, I will say that it could be influenced by my um, lack of being able to engage with the proper uh, groups of people in order to get a more representative uh, responses on the survey. And um, uh, this could be hopefully one of these, this is definitely an area that I want the survey itself to improve upon year after year, engaging with these types of uh, uh, groups, but also hopefully the community itself can start to use these as metrics to say, you know, we pay, where things are at are not great, but let's try to improve upon this. And being from the United States, I uh, most of my outreach outreach was probably biased towards uh, US-based responses, responders, not intentionally, but probably just through typical uh, selection bias. Most responders said that they do have a computer science degree, 35% um, no. And uh, the, this was another one of the free form questions to, uh, to answer. And um, I'm not gonna obviously go through all 2000 responses, but most of them come down to the, the thing that they've had difficult was wrapping their mind around um, kind of the distributed concurrency aspect of Elixir. Okay, so this is now getting into kind of like the open source demographics part of the survey and uh, a good number, 23%. I think that's um, uh, an excellent number um, on survey responders said that they do maintain an open source library. And this is really high that people are uh, contributing at a very high rate to um, other open source libraries in Elixir. And 14%, um, I mean, that's a good number that made contributions of survey response, responders contributions back to Elixir itself. And then Elixir meetups, I mean, this is um, a bit bittersweet for me. I kind of made my chops in the open source world on running and organizing meetups. And uh, I can see where a lot of people don't necessarily have meetups in their area or decide not to attend. That's roughly about 50% of survey responders are not attending a meetup. Um, I mean, life happens and same with me. I, I really don't get to meetups anymore, unfortunately. Uh, it also could just be the changing times. I'm not sure, but I still, I feel strongly that meetups are a, uh, a really important part of any um, software languages community. And um, 336 responders said that they are helping organize lecture meetups in some form, fashion, whether they're meetups or conferences or um, some other social gathering of lecture developers. Uh, this could be interesting to the gym. We have uh, a vast majority, you know, uh, two thirds of responders that are not attending uh, their continent's major Elixir conference. And then vast majority also uh, over 75% are not attending any regional Elixir Erlang conferences. 
And Elixir Form came out on top uh, for uh, online um, Elixir conversation and participation. I, I want to stop here for a moment and apologize if I missed any um, any venues for uh, discussion. And um, you're going to see the podcast section in it and the newsletter section, and you know there there could be definitely omissions there. Um, and we'll we'll definitely make sure that everyone is included. Those names are included next year. But one that came out um, in the other section that. Um, I found interesting. I had no idea that there was a, a strong community on there. Is actually Telegram. So I, I suppose that there is a uh, Elixir group on Telegram, and there's a um, good number of responders. Um, you know, there's just four out of the first seven that mentioned Telegram. So that was a a new place that I was unaware of. Uh, majority of responders don't listen to uh, podcasts, but those that do. Um, it's kind of a wash between the uh, uh, these four here, um, and we're talking about rounding errors essentially. I suspect that most people tend to listen to all the Elixir podcasts that do listen to podcasts in the first place. Elixir Radar, Elixir Weekly are the two leading Elixir-based newsletters that people are subscribed to, and the number one industry that uh, your company's in for Elixir is consulting. Um, financial tech information, education being the next three. Uh, having started a consultancy, I, I appreciate this, but uh, I also don't necessarily look at it as a interesting statistic on its own. We want more companies, more presence in companies that are building products rather than companies that are uh, building products for other people, if that makes sense. Vast majority. Uh, self-identified as senior engineers. A lot of people in the C-suite executive role. And then the company itself, yes, majority of people uh, who uh, work professionally in Elixir, their company is using Elixir. And a good number have been using it for over three years. Phoenix being the most popular reason for uh, companies to be using Elixir and there's um, team sizes that I feel like are you know, pretty strong uh, uh, groups at um, uh, two to four or five to 10. Um, and then there's 258 responders that have 21 plus. Um, that was a very interesting statistic there. I may put 50 plus next year to see if anyone responds to it. Uh, most companies that are using Elixir are using them for new projects. This actually was the opposite of what I thought it was going to be. I, I suspected most companies were bringing Elixir to migrate um, legacy products over to something new. So it's, um, it's really nice to see Elixir being used for, uh, uh, for whole new product lines. Ruby and Rails, unsurprisingly, uh, being the most popular language framework to migrate away from. And these were the outcomes that uh, people typically saw, faster application response time, less system resources, faster development time, less bugs. These are all very popular good things to, uh, for people to respond on and then peace of mind. So typically language politics, language religion, however you wanna call it is uh, the most a uh, common reason why Elixir was not being adopted at uh, a particular company. Um, and this this is a common trend that we see. I mean, you, you may have teams split on uh, which language or framework to use. And it, it really just comes down to comfort level, preference. Um, but also it can come down to, you know, business sense. And the thing that's well known is lack of available talent in the market. Uh, I think that we would have more companies using Elixir if it was uh, more economical for them to hire Elixir developers. Not to say that people should accept less money. I mean, in the sense for a lot of companies are taking talented engineers and then training them up in Elixir and that's expensive. Um, so for anyone that is uh, you know, affiliated with code schools, I know we have Elixir schools, 
Um, there is probably a, a big uh, gap in that market right now for training that's not being addressed, at least at the level at which companies are, uh, are, are requesting or needing. Um, I'll leave this open and just uh, people can go through this answer on their own because there's you know, quite a bit. Um, Mac being the most popular uh, uh, platform to develop upon, Linux or other POSIX based. Number two, Windows, not super popular. And um, there's uh, 10 answers here, so I'll go through them. All Solaris, Mac and Linux. I'm not sure if that person is actually, has two laptops or um, maybe VMs and then or if they mistook uh, development environments and production environment, but FreeBSD, I would have put that up in POSIX. Same here, but FreeBSD being somewhat popular. Windows, again, Windows, NixOS, and WSL2. I'm not sure what that is. Is that my Windows server again? VS Code, the most popular editor in the Elixir uh, uh, ecosystem. Probably due in no large part to, or small part to uh, the awesome language server that's available. And then IO puts inspect being the more popular way to debug. Um, I tend to use that as well, but I'm also making good use of prior debugger and I think they're all extremely valuable tools. And then Linux by far and away the most popular uh, platform to, de to deploy to. Postgres, destroying everything else. Uh, vast majority are writing tests. I didn't want to put in like, you know, test coverage or whether or not you're doing TDD. Um, felt like that was going too far down the rabbit hole. Vast majority of people are not using hot code reloading. In production, sorry, in production. And then deployment, where are people deploying to? And uh, AWS uh, winning this one out. Um, I will say that uh, it's great that Gig Elixir is in the top five. I think it should be much higher. I, uh, especially if you're on Heroku, I'll go ahead and, and tell everyone that's on Heroku, cancel your Heroku account and just go over to Gig Elixir. There's no reason why you shouldn't be on it. It's better. Um, it's a better uh, deployment. Uh, 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 system than Heroku is for, for Elixir based applications. Um, and the support you get out of Gig Elixir is phenomenal. If you jump into the Gig Elixir channel on Slack, um, uh, Jess is doing a, a great job. And I don't want to, I know I'm kind of selling Gig Elixir at the moment, but um, I do think that uh, someone that has invested that much into the you know Elixir community, um, uh, it'd be great if we could better support his efforts. Uh, Elixir releases, fantastic for being so such a, uh, a new technology um, has uh, seen significant adoption. Docker, number two, distillery, uh, Paul's library, number three. And then I was surprised that GitHub Actions was so popular for, for CI. Um, that's great. Elixir's formatter um, is a uh, extremely popular uh, choice for code formatting. And then I um, probably, this is not much of a surprise, but uh, Live View is uh, a uh, well represented in the one library that everyone was excited about in 2020. Um, yes, most people are using Phoenix. This brought you down the Phoenix branch. Unfortunately, I'm not sure, I, I still haven't gone through the survey. I don't know why this one has zero, zero answers to it. Clearly, I forgot to turn something on in the same thing in the nerf section, but we don't have any answers on the, uh, uh, the Phoenix versions. Uh, vast majority of people are running Phoenix in production. Um, and probably to Chris's chagrin, most people are using it as an API backend uh, rather than serving up uh, HTML, either through server-side rendering or live view. Uh, this shouldn't be surprising, not in the sense that uh, uh, 
you know, there are reasons not to use nerves. You said a lot of people aren't in hardware. And so um, it's great to see nearly 300 responders are using nerves. Same configuration issue probably as the uh, other question. And then a good number of people, uh, 50 responders said that they are using Scenic. And so that's great that the, the uh, Scenic on nerves applications is starting to see adoption. Um, and then about 30% um, are seeing the nerves applications distributed across many devices in IoT. So that's the survey response uh, results. Um, thank you everyone for, for uh, uh, participating. Um, I, uh, again, I really like to maybe get a few people um, to uh, help out uh, next year and um, uh, maybe even help me kind of get uh, some better questions in there and go through what we currently had. It'd be fantastic if I could get somebody to do data visualization upon the answers because this is what Typeform produces and it's okay, it's not great. Um, but uh, some of the uh, other uh, language communities out there have really excellent data visualization of their survey responses like state of js is uh, one that comes to mind um, the uh, uh, there are some people i would like to thank though that um, did help out um, hugo and carlo um, so hugo formerly a platform tech running elixir radar um, uh, he had um, on his own started to do a uh, i think some some thoughts around a survey um, and then when platform tech um, uh, was absorbed. Um, he kind of changed focus over the radar, but he handed off those questions to me. I was able to bring in some of them and we went back and forth a few times on improving the survey. Carlo from Dockyard, uh, very, very helpful in the same regard. Um, he, uh, uh, he helped uh, uh, curate and uh, uh, build out some of the, uh, the survey questions and really was someone to bounce some ideas off of from time to time. And then finally, about a month or so before I released the survey, I put it out on Twitter. I like to have some people kind of test drive it. And here's the list of people that uh, were thankfully able to, to do so. Um, and thank you to everyone on this list. Uh, you definitely found some uh, a lot of spelling errors apparently <laughs> that I had in the survey. And then also thank you to Jose. Um, just a special note there that it's great to be in a, um, uh, a language ecosystem where um, you know, Jose, he, he wants to be hands off on something. He doesn't feel the need to kind of you know, own everything. And that's really refreshing and it's freeing and it gives everyone a sense of agency over certain things. And so it's great to be able to participate, add to, um, uh, add to Elixir in everyone's own special way. So thank you, Jose. And that's, that is the uh, Elixir survey talk. I will, I guess if there is a, Two questions. Okay, number one, how does the distribution for each question in the survey compare to the development community as a whole? Okay, all right, so I'll talk about how I distributed it. Um, let me just quickly check my time. Uh, it's fine, don't worry, you can go okay, ahead okay. and, yeah, I got and answer them, yeah, don't worry. Yep, okay, all right, so um, I distributed the survey in several different ways. Number one, I promoted it on Twitter. Um, and that limits me to like my third to fourth, whatever degree retweets that I'm gonna get. Um, I asked Jose to, and he did off of the Elixir uh, uh, Twitter account. Um, I promoted it on Elixir forum. I contacted the Elixir forum organizers and I believe that they were able to pin it on Elixir forum. Um, I put it in Slack, but Slack's difficult because you know things disappear pretty quickly. Um, I then went through and I contacted every single meetup group that self-identifies as an Elixir meetup group. And that is uh, unfortunately very difficult work because Slack has spam filters built in where if you're sending messages too often or if they determine that the message you're sending is too similar to the last, like the last three messages you're sending, you're not quarantined for like a half an hour or an hour or so. So it, it took about a week to go through and message all of the meetup organizers. and. Um, Thankfully, a lot of them got back to me and uh, expressed uh, their interest in sharing the survey with their, uh, with their members. Um, uh, I think that was the extent of how I broadcast out to the world the, uh, uh, the, uh, the survey. I did reach out to a few specialty um, underrepresented groups, but 
unfortunately, I, I don't know if they're really running. Like, I'm not sure what the state of Rails Bridge is right now. Um, I reached out to the organizer of Rails Bridge and unfortunately didn't hear back. Um, I reached out to a few of the conference organizers and asked them to send out the, uh, uh, the survey to their attendees. Um, oh, and then I also reached out to a few consultancies like uh, Erling Solutions was, was awesome, Francesco. Um, I believe he uh, distributed to, um, well, definitely his employees, but also um, uh, presumably clients. Uh, I know that we, uh, I had Docker do that and a few other consultancies I asked to do the same. Um, one thing that did come about from this though, was I started to realize how difficult it is for, you know, to distribute these, these things into the community. And so I ended up creating a Google group for meetup organizers and conference organizers to join. And we got some people to join it. Um, it's a very low touch group and anyone that is running an Elixir event is more than welcome to join. Its primary purpose is just really, if there's a reason to quickly distribute, uh, distribute a message to um, all the organizers. So let's say Jim's running Elixir next year and he wants to you know, just let everyone know that tickets are for sale. You know, he would, he could just message on that group and now everyone gets the message. I think this is the perfect opportunity for uh, the early ecosystem foundation to step in and, you know, take something over like that or provide their own solution. Um, it shouldn't be this difficult for uh, uh, messaging and talking points and such to be distributed to everyone that's um, uh, running different events in some way. Uh, I think editor support equals equals. Uh, it doesn't have an IDE like Visual Studio. It's possible. I'm not sure. Um, it, uh, yeah, I, I kind of took editor support as just either they felt it was deficient in some way or, but it, I mean, it's an open question. So it could be up to interpretation. As a new Elixirist previously used mainly Ruby for a long time. It was cool to see these responses. Also, we deployed to a Roku, so we'll definitely be checking out Gig Elixir. Okay, that's great. I uh, am making money for people. <laughs> okay, um, I think that's it. Yeah, thank you, Brian, for the results of um, the survey. I'm sure it was very insightful for everyone, so thank you for that. Oh, um, I'm gonna be tweeting out the survey link because it was like this really long thing. So on my B Cartarella Twitter account, and I'll put the My Elixir status uh, hashtag on it. So if people want to see it and I'll probably tomorrow, I'll upload the CSV somewhere if anyone wants to take it down and play with it. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. See you Thank next you. time. Bye.